bravely risked their lives on September 11, 2001. I would like to welcome Mr. Anthony Hernandez, our parish business manager, to begin with the brief history of 9-11. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, I'm Anthony Hernandez, and I am the business manager here at St. Mary's Stars Catholic Church. I've been working here about three months, and I'm very grateful to show up, go to support our church, uh, historical dedication church uh, line. So on September 11th, September 11th, Islamic extremists vowing the death to all Americans hijacked four planes and flew it into two, uh, into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York. Another plane was flown into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and a fourth plane for some state headed to the White House or the U.S. Capitol was historically diverted by passengers and ended up crashing in an empty field in Pennsylvania. Reports of the first plane hitting the North Tower came in quickly, and millions watched helplessly as the second plane was plowed into the South Tower, live on television for all the world to see. 21 years ago, Americans watched in horror. Their enduring power of September 11 attacks is clear. An overwhelming number of Americans who were old enough to recall the day can remember exactly where they were and what they were doing when they heard the news. Yet, an ever-growing number of Americans have no personal memory of that day because they were either too young at the time or not born. A review of U.S. public opinion in two decades of, since 9-11 reveals how badly our, shaking was, our, sh our nation was shaken. And yet being shaken came together in the spirit of sadness and patriotism. A public rally behind the military was shown in support for the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. I hope this historic flag dedication is the first of many to keep the memory of 9-11 alive we as a nation shall never forget the heroes on that day and the heroes who answered our nation's call to service and most importantly, who, all, who gave their all for those attacks on that day. May God bless America. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez, for your history of 9-11. Uh, I'm going to call up now Reverend Randall Evangelista. He will now lead us in opening prayer. Please all stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are here gathering together to commemorate this September 11th for the loss of someone who are dear to us, who died because of the tragic terrorist attack on our great nation. There were a number of men who attacked us with barbarity and equal. They murdered people of all colors, creeds, and nationalities, and made war upon us and the entire free world. Sadly, 9-11 has become the modern generation's Pearl Harbor. Heavenly Father, on this day, we remember the innocent victims who lost their lives and pay tribute to those who give their lives so that others may live. For many of our citizens, the wounds of, the, of that past remain fresh. Firefighters and police officers so choked up and the memory of fallen comrades. Young children and teenagers still long for their parents who will never share the joys of their youth nor guide them to adulthood. We also remember the sacrifices made by our nation's armed forces, the Marines, the armies, the navies, the Air Force, to keep all of us safe. Every one of our troops is a volunteer, and since the attacks of September 11th, more than two million Americans have stepped forward to put on our nation's uniform. Over 50,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, guardsmen have suffered terribly. 
with injuries, thousands have given the ultimate sacrifice. Lord, out of this suffering, we make resolve to honor every man and woman who lost their lives, to have peace in their soul, and for your mercy be upon them. We ask you, Lord, to extend on them your pardon, hoping that one day we will see them again at the end of time. Give us the strength who remain here below to give consolation and comfort with one another with the assurances of our faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 St. Mary, start the sea. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Ray. I would like to now introduce Honorary Esther Sanchez, our Mayor of the City of Oceanside, California. Mayor Esther Sanchez is a lifelong member and honored leader in our Oceanside community. Mayor Sanchez has served our city for 22 years as a mayor and previously a city council member. We are so very proud to have her here speak at this commemorative event. Mayor Sanchez's commitment to public service and to law enforcement exemplifies a true leader and represents the spirit of service in our Oceanside community. Please welcome Honorable Mayor Esther Sanchez. Thank you. Thank you. And um, St. Mary's has meant a lot to my personally, to my family. Um, my parents married here in St. Mary's in 1954. Um, and then before that, when my dad uh, grew up here in Oceanside, um, he and, and his whole family, our whole families, have always been a part of St. Mary's. I thank you so much for this opportunity um, to be with you. Um, we do not always make a point of, of city of Oceanside working with St. Mary's. We are just across the street, and yet, St. Mary's is so, so very critical for us. St. Mary has provided guidance, spiritual guidance and support for our community for many years and we will be having uh, St. Mary's birthday very soon. We all remember where we were when September 11th happened, the tragedy. I personally had two friends who worked at the tower. And that whole day I spent trying to get reach them and hoped and prayed that they were not working that day. God must have heard my prayers because one person was out um, on vacation on that day and the other was running late. So many, so many died in our city's first real terrorist attack here domestically. It has perhaps shaken our faith and also made us realize how much we need to continue to pray and to be strong. We have with us today our representative from the Board of Supervisors, Jim Desmond, and also we have today our fire chief, David Parsons. At the time that I was asked to come, um, we were, I believe, we're still going through the process of choosing our next fire chief. So Dave Parsons, I'm going to introduce him as our next speaker so that he can speak to you as a first responder and to really have us feel the loss, truly the loss, but also the hope that we have. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, David Parsons, I'm the fire chief. As Mayor Sanchez said, I've, I've probably had about 14 work weeks, and uh, I'm very honored and proud that they've chosen me to serve you because I'm your fire chief. It's an honor to share this moment with St. Mary's. 
um, this event, this dedication, because today, as you know, is now known as Patriot Day. We honor, we memorialize a tragic moment, but it's also a galvanizing moment in our country's history. It's the 21st anniversary this year of the terrorist attacks. May we never forget the innocents who went to work that day, the brave who went in after them, and the courage of those then and now in our military and other first responders, public safety, that continue to protect, to serve, and prevent another 911. We're honoring the memory of almost 3,000 people who perished from 93 different countries and recognize this day as remembrance for those who went in to save them. The Oceanside Fire Department had people that worked in the, on the, what we call the pile, in quotes, the, trying to rescue people that were trapped. And we actually have someone that works for us right now who suffers ill effects from, from working on that, uh, on that day or on that event. So it still affects us now. And I ask you to think where you were that day. I remember very specifically where I was. I was at a fire station. I was a brand new firefighter here in the city. And as a crew, we watched. And I remember very vividly because I saw the firefighters and I saw the, the, the police officers all doing their jobs, knowing that that could have been us, that could have been my brothers and sisters in public safety. And then when the, the buildings collapsed, we knew that a lot of people died. Our deepest condolences, thoughts, and prayers go to the thousands in New York, including 343 fire department of New York firefighters who died that day, 184 wow. souls at the Pentagon, and the 40 on United Airlines Flight 93 in that Pennsylvania field. I tell you my story, and there's more to it than that, because I want you to tell your story, no matter how simple or how, how special, or maybe how tragic it was as the mayor recounted hers, her concerns, because we have to make sure that the memory is carried on to our younger generations. We cannot forget the sacrifices, the loss of innocent lives, both in their memory, but also to prevent this, hopefully, from ever happening again. Staying vigilant, staying on guard, as the military does for us on a daily basis. May we never forget the heroes, uniformed and civilian, because everybody helped that day. All of them are missed and loved by somebody in this world. And we need to continue that, those memories and making sure that, that uh, those memories and that love is carried forward for all these next generations and prevent this from ever happening again. I thank you for your time. Thank you for the honor for speaking to you. And I'll turn over to our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Parsons. Thank you, Mayor Sanchez. to now uh, introduce Lieutenant Colonel Jason Ford. He is currently the Deputy Director of Expeditionary Operations Training Group at Camp Pendleton South. Lieutenant Colonel Jason Ford has been serving in the United States Marine Corps for over 23 years. He is a true example of a dedicated military service member. He is also a new St. Mary Star of the Sea Church parishioner and an active Knights of Columbus member. Please welcome Lieutenant Jason Ford. Oceanside, parishioners of St. Mary's, uh, thank you for having me, thank you for coming on this day. When I was a little boy, I remember hearing about December 7th, 1941, a day that will live in infamy. It was this singular explanation that justified massive action. It was an event spoken with reverence, regret, pride, and honor. I did not fully understand its meaning, over the years, it became like a legend, with many stories mystifying it as if it were from another world. An occurrence so great in magnitude 
that could only happen once in a thousand years, and definitely not in my lifetime. The attack on Pearl Harbor was a travesty that affected many lives, changed the trajectory of our country, and was on the precipice of one of the world's most historic events, the Second World War. On September 11, 2001, I was a brand new second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. I was stationed at the Marine Air Ground Combat Center in 29 Palms, California. That morning, my roommate came bursting into my room, exclaiming we were under attack. After he explained, I was in a little bit of disbelief, but I realized it was time for me to get up and head into work. I live less than two miles from the main gate of the base. Yet that, there, that morning, there was a line to get in that was almost that entire two miles. The radio began to describe the first tower falling. Speculations of terrorism were intertwined with live reporting. I did not fully grasp what that meant for me or the country. As the day went on, it started to occur to me that I was in the midst of a world-changing event, not unlike the one I grew up hearing about with the attack on Pearl Harbor. Over the next several months, as the country was reeling from the events of that day, I experienced a range of emotions. I was sad that so many innocent Americans had been lost. Every time I watched videos of people falling from the towers before their collapse, I could feel my eyes well up with tears. Imagining their final moments was heartbreaking, and I prayed that God lifted their souls and instantly assuaged their suffering. To hear stories of the police and firefighters charging headfirst into those buildings against all basic instincts made my heart flutter with pride. I wanted to meet them and embrace them as brothers. The gratitude for their bravery and sacrifice was overwhelming to me. When the media would talk about Osama bin Laden and his accomplices, I would feel intense anger, the audacity and depravity to be able to target innocent people like that. The viewpoint that America was anything other than magnificent to these rogues was preposterous to me. And those who felt that way was obviously wrong and should be dealt with. Most of all, I felt excitement excited that I was in a position to be this country's sword and shield, that I would get to be a part of history like my grandfathers before me who answered the call after December 7, 1941. In the years after, I made multiple deployments to the Middle East. I saw parts of the world that you only catch a glimpse of on the news. I experienced austerity, danger, and saw the low points of humanity. Today, I am still filled with mixed emotions. Sadness and anger are still there, but have taken on different forms. I feel pride, but it is intermingled with doubt. Excitement no longer describes my attitude as I enter middle age, but my heart remains heavy as I look back over the last 21 years. Yet I stand here before you today with one emotion that has not changed, and that is hope. As we raise our flag at this wonderful church, in this wonderful city, amongst this wonderful parish, I am filled with God's presence. I am filled with a hope that the innocent Americans who were taken from us on September 11, 2001 will not be forgotten and the men and women who charged into harm's way did not do so in vain. Fellow parishioners, fellow residents of Oceanside, fellow Americans, please do not lose hope. Please keep the memory of the fallen in your hearts and pray that their lives meant something. Please look around this city 
and see all the brave young service members from Camp Pendleton who represent the blood and treasure of our great nation and pray for them. Please hug your friends and family members and thank God that on this day, 21 years later, we still stand one nation under God. May God bless you and may God bless America. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Jason Ford. I will now uh, call up uh, Jim Desmond. He wants to come up and say a few words. Please welcome Jim Desmond, please. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. And uh, appreciate Lieutenant Colonel Ford's uh, words as well. I want to share with you a little different perspective uh, that I had on 9-11. Uh, before I got involved in politics, I was a pilot for a Delta Airlines for over 30 years. And on September 10th, I was a co-pilot of a 757. We flew about 180 passengers over to Honolulu. Yeah. We were supposed to leave on the morning of September 11th. Uh, the yeah, captain called my room and said to me, hey Jim, we're not going anywhere today. Turn on the TV and it may be a few days before we even get home. As I watched the airplanes fly into the, uh, into the buildings, I could only think about what happened in that cockpit. And what happened those terrorists got in, into the cockpit and what they must have, how they killed the pilots sitting there. And then flew the airplanes into the buildings. And I thought about all the air crew and members and it just all the people on the, on the airplane themselves and how terrified they must have been when they were so low to the ground, flying right next to buildings. Now I know being stuck in Honolulu is not the worst thing. Uh, we were there for five days. But what happened was all the aircraft that were in the air coming over the Pacific, from Asia, from Australia, from Vietnam, from, from all, the, all, all the countries across the, the Pacific, all got diverted into Honolulu. And the hotel that we were staying at, all the air crews, <clears throat> pretty much catered to the air crews. So we had air crews from people around the world uh, coming in, flight attendants, pilots, all, all you know, having this sort of grief knowing that you know, members, you know, just what we did in our job were killed uh, during, during that event. And um, so it, it was really kind of that perspective. And so we had, every day we had briefings from the uh, Honolulu uh, Police Department, from the FBI, from the, from the, um, uh, from the U U.S. Uh, military and everything else, giving us briefings every day that would tell us what's going on, what we might be expected to fly back, and, and uh, when this eerie feeling that it would be over. And then uh, I think it was on Friday, I think it was a Monday or two, earlier in the week was 9-11, but that when we were finally able to fly out, we had a plane full of people, because everybody was stuck, everybody was uh, trying to get back home to where they came from, you know, where they came from. But we, were, we had a very, very full aircraft. <clears throat> My job was to inspect that airplane inch by inch and make sure that everything was okay with it. And I do remember the captain I flew with, it, with that day, who really gave a very great uh, uh, PA, most of which you can't usually understand or hear, I, I realize, in the airplane, but he gave a PA to, uh, <clears throat> to reassure everybody that we were safe and that we were gonna be okay. And so when I look back uh, on, the, uh, on that day and the remembrance, I really appreciate, you know, all the firefighters, all the first responders, everybody did just a fantastic job. But uh, I wanted to just share with you how that affected the aviation industry and the airline crews and those families as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Good. All right, we will now assemble the St. Mary's uh, Boy Scout Troop members uh, to help in the raising of the flag. I'd also like to call up Vivian Garcia. Okay. Um, boys, Boy Scouts, go ahead and stand up. Stand up, face right. Please walk towards the platform. <laughs> she wants to go with her dad.
Please stand. While the flag is being raised, I want to introduce to you Vivian Garcia, a well-known local talent, the daughter of our very own parish secretary, Melissa Garcia. Vivian will sing the national anthem while the flag is being raised. out of here we'll enter through the front uh, door of the um, of the hall and they're seating outside and everything like that so I will call the father in all of the proceeds to the pancake breakfast will go towards the, the flag and the renovation of the flag hall In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Father, you who set your angels to herald your Son's coming with cries of peace, hear our cry today that your peace may touch all corners of the world. Peace, the smallest child still in the womb. Peace, to the most vulnerable of our elderly who long to see your face. Peace to the migrant fleeing war, persecution, 
hunger and poverty, the peace to the citizens of those nations to which migrants flee, peace to the those touched by violence and disaster, by storms and quakes and droughts and floods, who struggle to find safety and mercy in the very world you made for us. You whose Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, call all peacemakers blessed. Help us force the peace in your name. Peace among nations, peace among neighbors, peace among family members. When we look back on this time, we, we recall it as a time we all heard the angels cry and work together to reveal that peace may become possible to all. A peace worth day of God, born into the world. A cry of peace, a prayer for the world peace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming, especially to our honored guest, the Mayor, Mayor Esther Sanchez, the uh, uh, Chief uh, Fire for Department, David, and Jim uh, Falls, and also uh, our uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Jason Ford from the Camp Pendleton. Thank you, and the Boy Scouts, and the school principal as our MC, and all of you who are here, especially the uh, uh, organizers, the business manager, and everybody. Thank you. Don't forget to get the world famous pancakes from the Knights of Columbus. Once again, all.